Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the organization of the autonomic nervous system by focusing more on how the preganglionic and postganglionic neurons actually signal to get a desired effect in a target tissue. And the way that these neurons are going to work is they're each going to release neurotransmitters. And for a typical anatomy and physiology course, you need to know those neurotransmitters and how this next cell in line responds to that neurotransmitter. So we're going to have to focus on the neurotransmitter that's released and also the receptor that that neurotransmitter binds to on the next neuron. Now remember, with the autonomic nervous system, we have preganglionic neurons, and we have postganglionic neurons. If you want more detail on how those are structured, please go back and watch the previous two videos. However, here I'm going to understand. Here I'll assume you understand the basic structure. Now, with the postganglionic neuron, for all of these systems, parasympathetic and sympathetic, the postganglionic neuron functions differently. Okay? There's variation in the postganglionic neuron. However, the nice thing here, and this will simplify this for you a lot. The preganglionic neuron is always the same, always the same, meaning the preganglionic neuron, regardless of whether it's parasympathetic or sympathetic, is always going to release the same neurotransmitter, and that's going to be acetylcholine. So that's what we're going to talk about here on this slide, and we'll talk about what are called acetylcholinergic neurons. What does that mean? Well, a neuron is named according to the neurotransmitter that it releases. Okay. So here I've got preganglionic neurons, two of them. We're going to look at two cases. Okay? This is a preganglionic neuron, and you can see here it's releasing acetylcholine. Right? So if these neurons are releasing acetylcholine, they are termed acetylcholinergic neurons, and sometimes we'll just shorten that to cholinergic. Okay? Cholinergic and acetylcholinergic, same thing. Okay? But because they're releasing acetylcholine, ACH, they are cholinergic or acetylcholinergic. So that's a very important point. Neurons are named according to the neurotransmitter that they release. And regardless of whether it's sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system, all preganglionic neurons are going to release acetylcholine. Now here's where the, the, the difference lies. It lies in the postganglionic neuron. So my question to you is, how does acetylcholine, how is it going to exert its effect on the postganglionic membrane? Well, it would have to have a receptor to bind to, right? So that means that the postganglionic neuron, which I'm about to fill in, is going to have to have a receptor to bind acetylcholine. Now, before we go any further, there are two kinds of acetylcholine receptors. There are nicotinic and muscarinic. Ignore muscarinic for the moment. We're only going to focus on nicotinic, and I'll tell you why. Okay? So notice that acetylcholine, doesn't matter which case we're looking at here, can bind to a nicotinic receptor. And these nicotinic receptors bind acetylcholine and allow that acetylcholine to exert some effect, such as activation, on the postganglionic neurons. Now, why do I have two systems here that look identical? Well, you'll see in a minute. But the really nice thing here about the autonomic nervous system is not only does the preganglionic neuron always release acetylcholine, the same neurotransmitter, but the postganglionic neuron always binds that acetylcholine with the same type of receptor. It's always nicotinic. Just because these postganglionic neurons right here both bind acetylcholine using nicotinic receptors doesn't mean these postganglionic neurons are going to have the same function. Okay? So we'll actually take a look at the first option where these postganglionic neurons release acetylcholine. All right, so on the left side here, this is actually in the parasympathetic nervous system over here. This is parasympathetic. And so in this case, acetylcholine binds to a muscarinic receptor, and then it has a parasympathetic effect on cardiac, smooth muscle cells, and glandular cells. And I have those tabulated over here. So we have parasympathetic effects on cardiac and smooth muscle, and parasympathetic effects on just regular glandular cells. Okay. So this over here on the left is a parasympathetic system. And so when the postganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, it's going to bind to these target cells via a muscarinic receptor. So first nicotinic, then muscarinic. 
And in this case, acetylcholine, by binding to a muscarinic receptor, is going to exert a parasympathetic effect on these cells. So over here on the right, preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, which binds to a nicotinic receptor on the postganglionic neuron. Same thing. But then in this case, the postganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, which binds to a muscarinic receptor on a sweat gland, and that induces a sympathetic effect on the sweat gland. So this is an important point to bring up. We can have an identical system here, but one case on the left is parasympathetic, another case is sympathetic on the right. And it just depends on the internal signaling within the cells that the receptors are on as to what the exact function is. Okay? Just because you have the same neurotransmitter and the same receptor does not mean that the exact function of the cell will be the same. Because on the left here we have parasympathetic, on the right we have sympathetic. But these are two options here. Okay? One thing I want to let you know is that if we're dealing with the parasympathetic over here on the left, every single parasympathetic system operates this way. They are all going to operate with a preganglionic neuron releasing acetylcholine, which then activates the postganglionic neuron by binding to a nicotinic receptor. The postganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, which binds to the muscarinic receptor on a target cell. That is how all parasympathetic systems work. Over here on the right with the sympathetic system, initially it's all the same, right? Preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine activates the postganglionic neuron through a nicotinic receptor. And then after that is where the sympathetic nervous system starts to have variation. So in this case, the sympathetic system, the postganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, which binds to a muscarinic receptor and has a sympathetic effect on the sweat glands. Now what we're going to see is some more variation in the sympathetic nervous system. So let's go on. This is all sympathetic right here. So again, we're going to start out the same way. Everything's the same to start. We've got preganglionic neurons that are going to release acetylcholine. Right? We've been through this before. And then the uh, acetylcholine binds to a nicotinic receptor on the postganglionic neuron. Same thing, right? But now notice that the postganglionic neurons are releasing different substances. Neurons are named according to the neurotransmitter they release. This neuron over here, this postganglionic neuron, releases norepinephrine. Therefore, it is termed an adrenergic neuron. Okay, adrenergic. Anytime there is a neuron that releases norepinephrine or epinephrine, it is termed an adrenergic neuron. This one over here on the right releases dopamine, DA. Because it releases dopamine, this neuron is a dopaminergic neuron. Again, very important thing up here to remember. But seeing as these postganglionic neurons release other neurotransmitters, we're going to have to have some other receptors to bind to them. Because an acetylcholinergic receptor, for example, a nicotinic or muscarinic, is not going to be able to bind either of these. We're going to have to have over here on the left a receptor on the target cell that binds norepinephrine. Over here, there's going to have to be a receptor that binds dopamine, and that's exactly what we see. First, let's focus on the left. We've got here a postganglionic neuron that releases norepinephrine. That norepinephrine will bind to an adrenergic receptor on cardiac smooth muscle cells and glandular cells, and it will exert a sympathetic effect there. Okay, sympathetic effect. Over here on the right, we have a postganglionic neuron that releases dopamine. That dopamine has to bind to a dopamine receptor. And in this case, those receptors will be on renal vascular smooth muscle, and so dopamine can exert a sympathetic effect on these cells. Okay? Again, the thing to emphasize here is that everything before the postganglionic neuron is the same. It doesn't matter if it's sympathetic or parasympathetic. Preganglionic neuron always releases acetylcholine, and then acetylcholine here always binds to a nicotinic receptor on the postganglionic neuron. From there, it differs. If we're dealing with the parasympathetic nervous system, that postganglionic neuron always releases acetylcholine, which then binds to a muscarinic receptor on the target cell to exert a parasympathetic effect. However, for the sympathetic nervous system, there's really three options so far. The postganglionic neuron can release acetylcholine, which then binds to a muscarinic receptor to exert a sympathetic effect, or that postganglionic neuron can release norepinephrine, 
which binds to an adrenergic receptor on the target cell to exert a sympathetic effect, or the postganglionic neuron can release dopamine that binds to a dopamine receptor on the target cell to exert a sympathetic effect. Okay? So really, when you're dealing with the sympathetic nervous system, it's really once you get to the postganglionic neuron that you have differences in the signaling. Okay? But everything in the autonomic nervous system before that is identical. There is, however, unfortunately, one exception. There's always an exception, isn't there? But this exception isn't too bad because it's only one case and it's really not terribly difficult to remember. And it's what's called the sympathetic nerve. This is, of course, part of the sympathetic nervous system. So parasympathetic, we don't have to worry about that much. It's pretty simple. Sympathetic, of course, is going to throw in a curveball. Now, the sympathetic nerve is going directly to the adrenal medulla. Okay? The adrenal medulla is part of the adrenal gland, and it's a part that actually releases epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine into the blood, about 90% of it's epinephrine. Okay? So when you're driving in your car and you have to slam on your brakes because all of a sudden there's an animal running through the road, you don't want to hit the animal, or if you want to avoid an accident with another car, you get this rush really fast, your heart rate goes up, um, and that's all because... Very quickly, the sympathetic nerve is activated and it causes epinephrine to spill into the blood. Okay, This is a very fast process. Why is it so fast? Because unlike the other parts of the autonomic nervous system, there is no pre- or post-ganglionic neuron. There is only one neuron, or one nerve I should say, it's actually multiple neurons, but it's one nerve called the sympathetic nerve. Now, when you're thinking about the sympathetic nerve, you can treat it like the pre-ganglionic neuron. What do I mean by that? Well, remember the preganglionic neurons all released acetylcholine, and then that acetylcholine bound to a nicotinic receptor. You can treat this neuron the exact same way. Even though it's not technically a preganglionic neuron because there is no postganglionic neuron, it functions the same. The sympathetic nerve, these neurons in here, are actually cholinergic because they're going to release acetylcholine. So it's going to release acetylcholine when stimulated, as shown right here. And so then, uh, this acetylcholine goes directly to receptors on the adrenal medulla cells. Um, and these receptors are nicotinic receptors. Okay? Um, these cells in the adrenal medulla specifically are called chromaffin cells. Okay? Chromaffin cells are cells that actually store large amounts of these uh, hormones right here, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. In this case, they're going to be hormones because they're going to be dumped into the blood. So when the sympathetic nerve becomes activated, it's going to function in the same way as the preganglionic neuron. It's going to release acetylcholine. However, the acetylcholine is going to bind to the nicotinic receptor, which directly activates the chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla. No postganglionic neuron necessary. And so then these cells, chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla, are going to directly dump these catecholamines into the blood. Okay, all three of these are termed catecholamines. By far, there's a lot more epinephrine, very little dopamine, maybe about 10% norepinephrine. And then all of them are going to be dumped into the blood. And then those are going to be the hormones, particularly epinephrine, that gives you that big rush whenever you have to slam on your brakes all of a sudden. Somebody who's an adrenaline junkie, um, people who like to do things like skydiving and so forth, um, they're actually trying to get this epinephrine rush. Okay? And it's a very, very fast process. So when you're looking at this system right here, again, treat the sympathetic nerve uh, very much like the preganglionic neuron and understand the function of the sympathetic nerve. It's really uh, mainly just going right here to the adrenal medulla. And so you can see the setup right here where you have the sympathetic nerve cell bodies in the lateral gray horn of the spinal cord. It goes out the ventral root through the spinal nerve, and then it goes here through the uh, white ramus communicants. And then it goes out here uh, through these thoracic splanchnic nerves, and then it goes down to the adrenal medulla. And you can see here there's no postganglionic neuron. It's going to synapse directly with these cells of the adrenal medulla, which are specifically termed chromaffin cells. And then they dump epinephrine and norepinephrine and trace amounts of dopamine into the blood. And then that distributes it throughout your entire system. So, covered a lot of stuff in this video, but I want to do a very, very brief review here. Okay? And that's looking at this slide right here.
So this is a nice organizing table where we can see all of the signaling patterns of the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. Here's the parasympathetic. There's only one option here. Preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, which then binds to a nicotinic receptor on the postganglionic neuron. Then the postganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, which binds to muscarinic receptors on the target cell. There's no other variation in the parasympathetic nervous system. There is, of course, variation then in the sympathetic nervous system. Here's the first option. Preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, which then binds to nicotinic receptors on the postganglionic neuron. Postganglionic neuron then releases norepinephrine, which binds to adrenergic receptors on the target cell. Then the second case, preganglionic neuron of the sympathetic nervous system releases acetylcholine, which binds to nicotinic receptors on the postganglionic neuron. Postganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, which then binds to muscarinic receptors on the target cell. Then the third option right here, preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, binds to nicotinic receptors on the postganglionic neuron. Then the postganglionic neuron releases dopamine, which then binds to dopaminergic receptors or dopamine receptors on the target cell. And then this other weird one, the sympathetic nerve right here going to the adrenal medulla, we got one nerve right here that goes directly to the medulla. It releases acetylcholine, binds to nicotinic receptors on the target cell, and then the chromaffin cells dump epinephrine and other catecholamines into the blood. So this is a good summary table right here, but really when you're learning this, make sure you remember the strategy. All of these systems right here have the exact same start a preganglionic neuron that releases acetylcholine, which then binds to nicotinic receptors on the postganglionic neuron. And then you have to worry about this variation right here and what the general effectors are. But I have faith that you guys can learn this using this strategy. Hopefully this gave you a good understanding of the signaling organization of the autonomic nervous system. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.